Welcome to the Scrap Mechanic Survival Flying Basics. I'll be your flight instructor, Chief Engineer. Let's get started. The flying vehicles we're going to be using today are the Indignant Bird, the Cloud Hopper, and a SAS Cycle. Technically, I don't fly around on a SAS Cycle, but for demonstration purposes, its jump jets are excellent examples of diagonal balancing. I chose all these different types of vehicles because they cover pretty much all of the basic flying stuff. I'm not going to be showing you how to build the exact same thing. It's more important for me to convey the underlying principles involved so you can design your very own flying vehicles without having to make all the same trial and error mistakes that I had to make to get to this point. The Cloud Hopper's navigation system is made with just two springs, four pistons, and just four buttons. You want to set yours up in a similar way to what I've demonstrated here. As you can see, I set up a little cross pattern that allows us to do a few things at the same time. Pitch. Roll. And yaw. We have a similar setup with the Indignant Bird, which arranges the springs not in a cross pattern, but more to balance the weight of the vehicle better from front to back. It may have been difficult to see how this works in such small compact flyers, so I built you a template. Let's check it out. This is yaw, left, right, this is roll, left, right, and this is pitch, up, and down. I'll be putting this template for you on my workshop in a link below, so check it out. I know some of you out there are much more hands-on learners. I am too. Now that you've got a way to point your vehicle in the direction that you want it to go, it's time to set up your thrusters. You want to orientate your thrusters at about 45 degrees of an angle to start off. No, it's probably not going to stay at a perfect 45, but it's a good starting point. As you add weight in the form of fuel tanks, seats, and possibly other decoratives, you're going to need to imagine balancing all those components out across a diagonal line that is perfectly in line with the direction of thrust. You also want to make sure that you place your thrusters on bearings like I've demonstrated here. This is a very important step. It's going to be these bearings that allow you to fine tune and hopefully eliminate any pitch drift that your vehicle may have during the calibration process. It's also really important that you build with left to right symmetry. All this means is that when you're looking at the vehicle head on, the left and the right side of the vehicle are perfectly equal. Any lack of left to right symmetry during this stage of building is going to make diagonal balancing incredibly difficult, maybe even impossible later on. So you need to keep this in mind. Front to back, this vehicle is going to be asymmetrical. But we'll be able to fix that during the calibration process with those bearings we had attached to the thrusters. The thrusters are only in line across one axis, so we can only fine tune across that one axis. I know this is a lot of stuff to take in all at once, so feel free to pause the video or go back, rewind, slow it down, whatever makes it easier for you to keep up. But I think you're starting to get the basic gist of what we're trying to do here. Our little flyer has two very important jobs. It needs to go up and it needs to go forward. The reason we put the thrusters on at this angle is to get both of those benefits at the same time. And the reason we're using two thrusters is because we want that left to right symmetry. Now would be a good time to pause the video and get your flyer built. But when you're ready to calibrate, go ahead and unpause it and I'll walk you through the process. Ooh. 
If you're just here to get schooled up as a pro scrap mechanic, then just keep watching right on through. Alright, so you've been building long with me, and you've got your flyer ready for its first test flight! What's the first thing that we need to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is determine whether or not the current placement of your thrusters have enough calibration range to correct your pitch drift. And the only way to do that is with some test flights. So fire up those thrusters and see what happens. Oh, and make sure you're taking off from level flat ground. You're doing some serious testing here, guys. Don't sabotage your own results by contaminating your test environment. Okay, so you've probably done a few test flights, and your vehicle's flipping all over the place, and you're thinking, this sucks. And it does. The reason it does is because you haven't calibrated yet. Now, there's three different ways to calibrate your flyer. And this is where things start getting very interesting but very fun. First thing you're gonna need is a bunch of gas because the calibration process is not cheap. The next thing you're going to need to do is turn your thrusters all the way up to 11. I mean, I mean level five. Turn your thrusters up to level five. If not, pause the video, go make yourself some level five thrusters and we'll talk again when you get back. All right, you got your gas, you got level five thrusters. Good. Now hop in the seat, hit the gas. If both the thrusters are set correctly and equally, there can only be three possible outcomes. Either your flyer is pitching down or your flyer is pitching up. If you're extraordinarily lucky, and there's no pitch drift at all, then you're a god who built perfectly balanced across the diagonal. Congratulations! Pat yourself on the shoulder! But if you're like the rest of us mortals, you're going to need to start calibrating now. If your vehicle was pitching down too much, one of the ways to calibrate and cancel that out is to calibrate for lift. This is useful if you have a very heavy vehicle and it doesn't rise very quickly. All you do is rotate your thrusters under your center of mass a little more. This is going to adjust the diagonal line across your vehicle and hopefully put a more equal amount of mass on both sides of this imagined diagonal line. Now if the opposite was happening, and your vehicle was pitching up too much, then you can try calibrating for speed instead. In this case, we do the opposite. That means we tilt the thrusters up more, so that imaginary line uh, of divided mass will have more mass below the thruster. Hopefully than above the thruster, depending on your build design. Of course, all of this depends on your thruster placement as well, with regards to the overall mass placement on your vehicle. Remember when I told you earlier that the 45 degree angle was not something to get too attached to? That's because calibrating for lift or calibrating for speed will either be an additive or subtractive process to that 45 degrees. Keep in mind, this is only the first way you want to try to calibrate. You're probably not going to eliminate all your pitch drift by doing this, but if you could get yourself to where you have very little pitch drift, the next way to fine tune things further would be with what I'm going to call doing a thruster twist. All right, before we move on to thruster twisting, we need to get something established here, and that is are you at a point now in calibration where you're only getting a small, slow drift up or down when you're firing yourself around at maximum thrust on your level five thrusters? If not, and you feel as though your vehicle is not performing at your minimum expected standards at this point, then you need to reconsider the overall weight and composition of your vehicle. You may need to reposition your thrusters, add more thrusters, 
Maybe move your thrusters a block forward or a block back or up or down, depending on what your testing has shown you up to this point. So you finally made it. You're ready for some fine tuning. Just like before, when we were calibrating for lift or calibrating for speed, the idea was to rotate the thrusters up or down. Now we're going to use the twist function of that one last bearing that we attached to the thruster to do even more precise fine tuning. If the vehicle is still pitching upward, just adjust the bearing one degree at a time by holding shift as you drag left or right in the controller menu. This will give you very minute adjustments. What you're trying to do is as close to perfectly as you can line up perfect center of thrust with perfect center of mass along the diagonal plane in which you have positioned your thrusters. Whew. When you can do this, and you can do this, you should be able to almost completely eliminate 99.9% .9 of your drift issues. But that's not all. If you are still having some drift issues, you can try adding very small parts above or below that imaginary dividing line or even more subtle correction. But don't feel bad if it's not perfect. The reason we're calibrating at maximum thruster output is to amplify any balancing issues. In most cases, when you turn your thrusters back down to their normal operating levels, you'll experience almost no drift. It'll be incredibly negligible. All right. Earlier, I mentioned there were three different ways to calibrate your flyer. Let's do a recap. The first one was thruster placement. Sometimes you might need to move where the thruster is entirely to get it into a good spot with relation to how the mass is distributed on your vehicle. The next one is thruster angle. Depending on the previous thruster positioning, this next positioning will also adjust how much mass is above or below the thruster by the angle at which you place the thruster. Keep that in mind with thruster angle placement. And the last one, which is your most fine tuning type of method, is twisting the thruster. Remember guys, throughout this entire process, you're gonna be testing, calibrating, adjusting, and fine tuning the entire way. So there you have it. You're not just a scrap mechanic anymore, you're a flight mechanic. Thank you for watching, keep dreaming, keep building, and remember to pay attention to what people are building. Because you can learn a lot about someone by the things they build. Till next time, Chief Engineer is signing off.